Hello and welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome here to Stowmarie's Great War Airdrome. This is the latest release from Burning Blue Design and huge thank you to those guys for giving me the opportunity to fly their new release and also to show it to you in this video. It really is once again an absolute work of art. I keep saying it they capture detail and life and the feel of a place. I've never been here. Uh, I can imagine if I did, I'd pretty much feel at home. I would love to know anyone who actually flies from here in real life or has visited. Stick it down in the comments below. Let me let me know what you think. Usually when I ask that question, people say, wow, it's just how just how I know it. Be really interested to see what uh, what you think. It's a unique aerodrome, this. It's a very, very well-preserved uh, First World War airfield that's probably unique in terms of there really isn't anything else around <laughs> that's quite like it. It played a key role in the position of where it is in that it was there to defend London against German air raids in the First World War. And can you imagine climbing out of here to go and intercept a Zeppelin? It's, uh, I just can't even begin to get close to imagining what that must have actually been like. Um, we're very lucky in that the farmer who took over the airfield used the buildings as part of the farm for storage and that sort of thing. And as a result, the, the buildings are actually in really good nick and they're in the process of uh, renovating, rebuilding and restoring, as you can see, and uh, really bring it back to its former glory. And it's a great record of, of how a First World War airfield would have appeal, appeared. Um, so wonderful to have it in the sim as well. It's, it's very different, very different from what we've seen up till now. So anyway, let me tell you what it's about. And I'm going to read from their website, tell you the, the specs. Uh, it's been faithfully recreated by Burning Blue Design, undertaking on-site visits to ensure the highest levels of accuracy. It features over 90 custom 3D objects, each with full PBR textures. Based on the October 2023 layout, full custom night lighting, animated hangar doors which close at night, animated main gate which closes at night, completely custom windsock and anemometer, <laughs> try saying that after a few, animated spectators, real life static aircraft at Stowmarie's, Golf Alpha Bravo Alpha Alpha Avro 504K, Golf Charlie Juliet Zulu Oscar Royal Aircraft Factory B2E Replica, Golf Alpha Romeo Uniform India Sop with Pup Replica, Golf Bravo Mike Delta Bravo Royal Aircraft Factory SE5A Replica, Golf Whiskey Alpha Hotel Tango Albatross DV Otto Kissenberth, and Golf Bravo Whiskey Mike Juliet Newport 17-2B Replica. And also high resolution colour corrected ground textures taken from Bing maps and manipulated for consistency and realism. And I think you can agree it just looks absolutely fantastic. I am using WIMP weather today because uh, the weather today in uh, the real world uh, is pretty, pretty dull. So I've used WIMP weather just so that you can actually uh, get a better idea of the scenery and the colours. And we are, of course, going to be taking a quick flight in this beautiful Ants Aeroplanes uh, Tiger Moth. It's an aircraft that I don't fly enough. And whenever I do, I think, why the hell did I do this more often? It's a beautiful aeroplane. Uh, so we're going to take a flight in the local area just to get an idea of what it's like. And uh, and also have a look, of course, at Stomaris from the air. Anyway, enough of my waffling. Let's climb in. Let's get going. Right, here we go. So I think uh, I think what we'll do is we'll probably go take a look at uh, Damins Hall, which is another uh, fantastic aerodrome from Burning Blue. I think it's well worth having a look at that and uh, just seeing what the local area is like. 
So let's just have a... I'm quite sure what the etiquette here would be in real life. So I'm just going to toot across to, uh, I guess, runway 33, taxi down that, and then uh, go around 419, which seems to be the uh, obvious choice for today. A little bit of a bump there. So let's come around here. I do love this Tiger Moth. It has so much uh, character about it, and a day like today, uh, in an airfield like this, it's the obvious choice. Look at all those biplanes. Fantastic collection. I must come here in real life sometime. So the wind, because we've got wind weather on, is pretty negligible. Uh, I might actually, might actually use this runway. Because the wind really is going to make a huge difference and we're coming up to the threshold now so I'm thinking we might as well. And let's just swing around. Uh, we'll aim for that gap in the trees, eh? That's probably quite a good idea, I should say. Okay, let's give us some beans. Let's reset my head tracking a second. That's better. Excellent, that's a good start. Come back on the power a little bit. Then we'll come around and have a look at the airfield. Uh, I should say I'm using um, Rex Accuses in advance, so that's why you're going to see a bit of a difference with the, uh, with the trees there compared to how yours might look if you don't have that. So much character and history in there, it's just incredible. Wonderful. Not really a biplane guy, but seeing those biplanes lined up there, it is a fantastic sight. beautiful flying day but then it would be because we've got wind weather on absolutely gorgeous sometimes if you want really want to appreciate the scenery you do just have to take the realism out of it because honestly the weather today I did have a look at it I like to fly real weather where possible because it does add a certain realism to it but it was just absolutely pants um, so this is the only way forward really and great to be in this open cockpit Tiger Moth. Uh, the next group flight we have on the Discord will probably be Tiger Moths, I think. There are quite a few people on there who are interested in it. And I think it's been a long time since we've done it. And talking of the Discord, I'll put a link down below. Do come along and say hello. We post screenshots, talk about aeroplanes and helicopters, have group flights. There's a fantastic mix of people there of... Uh, all experience levels and some very very clever there people there and we even have a uh, photography section now because we've got quite a few aviation photography experts there of which I am not one 
I'm still very much a whack it into manual mode and then wonder why they don't come out how I'd like them to. So I do need to uh, learn the ropes for that. That's an interesting, interesting sight down there. Not quite sure what the autogen's doing, but uh, somehow don't think that's what that looks like in real life, maybe. Looks like, oh, maybe, it looks like a kind of a modern housing estate, maybe. And the autogen has just whacked down on it. That is uh, Hullbridge, for anyone who's interested. And we're just flying over. Over here in Essex really does hit home. Can you imagine trying to intercept a Zeppelin, especially at night, in an open cockpit biplane? Good God. And I believe up until the point where they had incendiary bullets, it was actually quite hard to knock a Zeppelin down. Uh, in my ignorance, I always thought maybe you just stick a few holes in it with conventional uh, ammunition and eventually it comes down but not quite so easy to uh, Raby. I'm always very careful now in videos how I pronounce names after the uh, video I did at Tatenhill, Hill where I was calling it Tatten Hill and uh, Stone Maris. It's very easy to call it Stone Marie's or something like that. So Rayleigh could be Raleigh but I somehow think it's probably Rayleigh. say it but the scenery in this sim really does bring it all to life and when you've got a lovely little aerodrome like uh, Stowe Maris to come from it's uh, well worth it was that, that big road there, that looked familiar, A, A127. So we are, as you've probably realised if you know the local area, we're just uh, going to take a slight detour, there's a couple of, um, couple of things I thought we'd have a look at. We're coming up to Hadley Castle, which is one of the POIs on the new Orbex uh, South Great Britain POI pack, so we'll have a look at that. Get the uh, aeroplane lined up correctly. I don't think it's that Dunder Mifflin building just over there. I think it's probably that. Maybe that wee tower there. We'll have a look anyway. We've got one eye on the map and one eye on the flying. Yeah, that looks castle-ish to me. So that's one of the POIs, Hadley Castle. Say a quick hello to them. And then we are going to, let's have a look. Need to come back over here, go to Cooling Castle. Just across the water. Tilbury Docks over there. The features on the ground are just absolutely incredible. The detail. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm coming over here, not just to see the castle, but also there's an area that I believe, I want to say they used to manufacture explosives. Um, whatever it was, it was dangerous. You see the uh, 
kind of wall there, the dike, the defences defenses against the water. Um, yeah, I want to say it was, uh, it was explosive, something pretty dangerous. I'm sure they used to make ammunition there. I might be wrong. I'm sure someone will jump in the comments and uh, say what it actually was. But uh, it's an interesting feature. It'd be interesting to see what it looks like from the air. Uh, I used to uh, fly over this way in P3D using the Orbex scenery and used to see it sometimes there. So coming over Canby Island. I would say that's a, probably a caravan park down there, but the Autogen has populated it with lots of tiny houses. Head across the water, this is the, uh, of course, the River Thames. Thames Estuary. It's interesting, um, and it's the same goes for helicopters really, but it's when you fly an aircraft that's actually this slow, that you really start to appreciate the scenery and the detail of it when you come to an area like this, which uh, you might not necessarily imagine to have so much detail in it. You look at the, the features along the uh, riverbank there, quite amazing. And again, one of the real strong points of the sim, that there is so much detail in doing this kind of flying. So, what are we coming up to now? This is Calling Castle, so let's see if I can uh, line her up so that we can actually see it. Let's see if we can uh, spot it. Can we see it from the air? See some office buildings, that can't be it. Let's come a little bit more over here. Maybe it's not quite so obvious. There it is, just next to that modern building. You could actually have great fun just uh, touring around looking at castles in this. <laughs> right, let's uh, head up this way. Then we'll see what this, uh, these features look like. I'm not sure how much we'll actually be able to see. I'm guessing, hoping, we'll see quite a lot. That's Cliff down there. And then we've got Cliff Pool's uh, RSPB over there, which is a bird sanctuary. So we've got some sheep. People probably quite thankful that uh, there's nothing dangerous going on here anymore. There we go. So you can see some buildings over there. That's kind of where we're heading for. If you have a look at it on Google Maps, you'll see what I'm talking about in terms of all the structures that are here. I think we've possibly got a bit of autogen uh, injection going on. got down there. Not a lot, apart from some sheep or cows.
So I can just about make out some of it on the edge there. You can see more of it over here. It has put some autogen in, but you can see the features on the ground. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm sure it was uh, explosives, ammunition. There you go. Okay, let's head to Damins Hall, which is another one of those places where most people probably don't have an issue with. For some reason, uh, I remember when I first learnt of it, I had what it's called it Damien's Hall. God knows why. It's Damins Hall. You look at the word, it's Damins Hall. Simple. Tilbury Docks over there. Just see him in the distance. Now, from memory, Damage Hall, there are some rather nasty wires. But uh, I think also from memory, we're probably going to be coming the opposite direction to those looking at the... Oh, no, no, we are going to be sort of looking at that, uh, looking at the wires. We will take... Yeah, we'll take runway 2-1. I think. So what are you flying at the moment? What are you enjoying flying in the simulator? Do stick it down in the comments below. I'm always interested to know what, uh, what people are up to, what they're enjoying. I know there's a lot of people flying in the Victor at the moment. Um, if I'm honest, it's not my cup of tea. I have a huge amount of respect for the Victor. And I think to look at it's gorgeous, and certainly to listen to it's gorgeous. But it's not necessarily the kind of thing that I want to fly in the sim. Not at the moment, anyway. Um, from the looks of it, it's a pretty good study level. And I certainly don't have the time to study at the moment. My day job is incredibly busy. A lot going on. And uh, I'm finding it hard enough to find time in the evenings and weekends to make videos, let alone let alone actually do uh, do some studying, um, but uh, who knows, who knows. But I know that's been quite a big one, let's just check the head track in there. There we go, that's better. just to fly. Really is. Thames getting narrower there as it uh, heads towards London. Also interesting, very much a stick and rudder aeroplane, obviously, but uh, just notice looking at the uh, 
side slip indicator that I wasn't really doing much with the rudder pedals. And if I let go on the rudder pedals, you can see that we were actually uh, got some side slip to the left a little bit. So if I just correct that, if there are any uh, Tiger Moth experts out there, they'll be saying, good God, man, learn to fly the aeroplane properly if you're going to feature it. Sometimes people do get very upset if you don't fly things properly. And uh, it's one of the dangers of uh, being a jack of all trades and a master of none, which is something I do try and avoid, but spending so much time in other aeroplanes at the moment, especially helicopters, uh, you come back to something like the Tiger Moth and you forget the little nuances. It's a little light aeroplane, it hasn't got a huge amount of power. You, it feels everything. So we're coming up on Damins Hall now. Start to uh, start to lose a bit of height. Hall, of course, is the home of the uh, Tiger Club. Who can fly Tiger Moths a lot better than I can, that's for sure. first thing to do is actually look for the airfield and identify it. That's always a, uh, a big help. There is a industrial estate next to it. I have a feeling that's it over there. Yeah, there's the wires. back on the power. Make sure we come over the wires. Going under the wires at this point would be silly and going into the wires would be very silly. Watch the speed there boy coming too hot. Let's just skip over the wire. Watch that one there. Don't want that tickling the tyres. There we go. Right, I'm pretty sure that's the runway. <laughs> Not something you want to hear your pilot say. Uh, yeah, let's come over the trees. Oh, there's the runway. Let's just come to the left a bit. And come to the right a bit. And floaty, floaty. That's a symptom of coming in too fast. There we go back on the stick just to try and get as much braking as we can and we are down if you want to see the uh, Damon's Hall video by the way I'll put a link to it down below if you want to see it in more detail it's another gorgeous uh, burning blue design airfield they made a, made a fantastic job of it I know after that landing it sounds like I've had some mead but they made I didn't mead but there you go Anyway, great to have you on board. Thanks for joining the flight. I do hope you enjoyed it. I'll put a link to uh, the Burning Blue Design scenery down below so you can have a look. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again on the channel soon now. Take care.
Bye-bye.